In this lesson, we're going to be introducing what the gas laws are and our first law called Boyle's Law. So that's exactly what we're doing. So when we talk about gas laws, we have to understand the fact that the amount of the gas that you have, which is like adding or taking away, the pressure, the volume, and the temperature are factors that can affect gases, which means how do they act? As relationships can be made between these factors, gas laws were developed to predict the outcome of changes which occur within a sample of gas. So for example, if you ever pumped up a bike tire, you're adding gas. As you add the gas in, the volume of the tire should increase, which is what you want. You don't want to be riding around on a flat tire. As you increase the volume by adding more gases, those gases are going to be ramming into each other, and as they do that, it makes it more pressurized. As you continuously add more gas into your bike pump, for example, you do run that risk of <laughs> blowing it up, which means you'd have a sudden sharp increase in temperature. Ooh. And if you also think about it with the tires again, that's why people during the winter time seem to have flat tires, but in the summertime, their tires are very expanded because the temperature in the winter is less and the particles move slower. Four variables that we're going to look into. We're going to talk about the number of moles, which is represented by N, the volume in liters, which is V, temperature in Kelvin. You always need to convert degrees Celsius to Kelvin. And then finally, pressure in kilopascals. For pressure, we are going to prefer kilopascals, but on occasion, we can use atmospheres, NTOR, and millimeters of mercury. So changing the amount of gas, which means that you have more molecules, which means that there's going to be more collisions and more pressure because of those collisions. If you have fewer molecules, you're going to have fewer collisions, which results in less pressure. Gas naturally move from areas of high pressure to low pressure. Which is simply, if you think about biology, what the fusion is. You have a lot of things in one area, and they will over time spread out to a lower pressure zone. When we change the volume of a gas, you can increase the pressure of a gas by decreasing the volume. That's because you're squeezing all the particles together. If you ever have an uncle, probably a crazy uncle that plays the accordion, the pulling motion back and forth changes the volume inside the accordion, thus causing gas to flow in and to flow out because gases move from high to low zones. The more a gas is compressed, the greater the pressure within the gas. If we half the volume of a container, its pressure doubles. And if you double the volume of a container, the pressure halves. So if you think about also those water bottles that you guys like to twist, twist and, and mold into a cannon, okay, the reason why it's able to do that is because the gas pressure is building inside and eventually it's going to create that push on that cap. So when we talk about Boyle's Law, pressure and volume are our variables, which means those are the things we can change, while temperature and moles are constant. They don't change. As the volume decreases, the pressure increases. We call this inversely proportional, which means that the opposite occurs for each other. If you were to increase the volume, the pressure will decrease. As volume decreases, the particles have less room and collide with the inside of the container more causing more pressure. And again, inversely, if you increase the volume, then your particles would not hit the container as much, causing less pressure. So again, just thinking about that, on the left you have a container at low pressure because it's got lots of space for those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 gas molecules. But on the right hand side, those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 gas molecules are in a very small zone, and now they're really vibrating off each other, which causes a lot of pressure. And again, the same situation can be seen in different views. Again, it's all about how much space you have to the amount of pressure that is given off. By the way, this apparatus is what we call a piston. You will be seeing that word a lot in questions. Just think of a piston as a bike pump as you push down you push air out, which means you have a high pressure. But as you pull outwards, you're opening up the volume. That means the low pressure and gas can flow into it. So this is what Boyle's Law is. Boyle's Law is simply pressure times volume 
is equal to pressure times volume. But in yellow, we have 1 and 2. So P1, V1 is your beginning pressure and beginning volume, and P2, V2 is your final pressure and your final volume. So therefore, when we do these formulas, your pressures must have the same units. If they're not the same, like P1 is atmospheres, but P2 is millimeters of mercury, then you have to change them so that they're both the same. Also, volume, V1, beginning volume, and V2, final volume, also must be the same units. If you're going from liters to milliliters, you have to do conversions because one milliliter is not the same as one liter. So just to look at a graph on the left, this graph is showing the inversely proportional change between volume and pressure. So as pressure is increasing, you will notice that volume will decrease accordingly. Uh, also, if you notice on the right-hand side, the piston is wide open, lots of space for those five little gas molecules to move around and bounce around in, so the pressure is less. But if you notice as you push the piston down, notice how many more times the, those little five gas particles can hit the corners of the glass because there's not as much space for them to move around. Let's try a sample problem. A rubber tube is filled with 25 liters of xenon gas at one atmosphere pressure. If the pressure is changed to 1.5 atmospheres at a constant temperature, what is the new volume? Also, try to anticipate an answer here. If the pressure is increased, what should happen to the volume? We're going to set up the formula by adding the values that are considered the initial. So we put those in blue for you on the screen. Then you're going to set them equal to the new values, the second values, which are in yellow on the screen. So you end up with a formula of 1 times 25 is equal to 1.5 times x. Manipulate the formula, get x by itself, and you end up with 25 divided by 1.5. When you calculate this, you get 16.7 liters. Again, does this make sense? So you're going from 1 atmospheres to 1.5. You're applying pressure. As that pressure is being applied, you have now less space than what you started with. Again, think about a water bottle and as you squeeze it, there's technically less space because it's being crumpled. Again, using Boyle's Law, let's think about a truck tire. If a truck tire is filled with 73 liters of air at 1.3 atmospherical pressures, what pressure is going to be needed to change the volume to 4.30 times 10 to the fourth milliliters, assuming that temperature remains constant. The very first thing that we should be doing in this sample problem is observing that our volumes are not the same. We have to make sure that all of our volumes are the same. So the thing that is glaring is our milliliters. We know that 4.3 times 10 to the fourth, simply put from scientific to standard, means 43,000 milliliters. If one milliliter is one liter, 43,000 milliliters means you have 43 liters. So right there, 43 liters is the first conversion we've done. You can also use the method we talked about in September by using table C. Which is found in the unit one oh, playlist. I couldn't remember. Our P1 is going to be 1.3 atmospheres, which is being multiplied by our original volume of 73 liters. Our new volume is going to be 43 liters, and we don't know what our new pressure is. Again, let's assume. If you're going from 73 liters to 43 liters, a decrease in volume, and this is an inverse proportion, if you're decreasing the volume, therefore your pressure should increase. So let's manipulate the equation, and now we're trying to get x by itself, and then we notice we now have 2.21 atmospheres. So, as we increase the pressure, we decreased the volume. So here's another problem for us. Two liters of air at 101.3 kilopascals are compressed into a canister of a warning horn. with a volume of 0.45 liters. 
If its temperature remains constant, what is the pressure in millimeters of mercury of the compressed air? First thing we should notice is that the pressure is not in the same units of measurement. It is much easier to change the pressure before you do any of the math. So if you recall, 101.3 kilopascals is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. So we're just going to substitute 101.3 kilopascals for 760 millimeters of mercury in our math. So we set up the formula 760 times 2.0 liters because those were our initial pressure and volumes. And then we're going to set that equal to 0 0.450 liters and multiply that by x. Manipulate the formula and we really should think about what our final answer will come out to be. So if we're decreasing, if we are decreasing our volume, our pressure should again increase. And we end up with 3,380 millimeters of mercury, just like we assumed. If you change this into scientific notation, you would get 3.38 times 10 to the third millimeters of mercury. So in reality, you're going from 760 millimeters of mercury, what you originally started with, and because you're getting smaller in size, your pressure is going to increase. This is why it goes from 760, P1, to 3,380, which is your P2. So this is the last problem that we're going to do, but we want you guys to do this one on your own. We'll read it off to you, but we are not going to tell you the answer. The maximum volume a weather balloon can reach without rupturing is 22,000 liters. That's massive. It is designed to reach an atmosphere of 30 kilometers. At this chilly negative 30 degrees Celsius attitude, that is a chilly attitude. It's a very chilly attitude. At this chilly negative 30 degrees Celsius altitude, the atmospheric pressure is 0 0.0125 atmospheres. What maximum volume of helium gas should be used to inflate the balloon at standard pressure before it is launched? So looking at the information that we have, you need to figure out what your original volume is. You are looking for V1 when everything else is given for you. Good luck.